All right, I want to give you guys a little bit of history about this engine. So the RX-1 was launched in 2002 as the as Yamaha's first uh, four-stroke snowmobile. It was a 998cc liquid-cooled four-stroke double overhead cam, inline four-cylinder with five valves per, per cylinder. Um, the base motor was originally uh, from the Super Sport motorcycle, the YZF R1, the R1 race bike. It has the same pistons, connecting rods, and intake and exhaust cam and valve system as the R1. In contrast, the crankshaft, cylinder head, lubrication system, which is a dry sump, uh, the cooling system, and the reduction gear shaft and other parts were re redesigned specifically for the snowmobile application. So in 2006, the engine underwent its next evolution to the Apex model gaining a fuel injection and a much lighter crankshaft design, uh, reducing the weight by one kilogram. And that also helped achieve linear response and improved acceleration. Uh, they did one more evolution in 2011 with a new exhaust layout and the addition of the exhaust ultimate power valve, or also known as the X-Up. In addition, they added a knock control and a new intake funnel design, increasing the power by about five horsepower. The Apex snowmobile engine has been voted one of the top 10 best snowmobile engines of all time. So looking at the options of, of engines that you can use to adapt to our specific application, the reliability and the history of an engine is probably the first place to look. I personally chose this engine because of the history it has, the design, the power to weight ratio, fuel consumption, and the fact that there is a gearbox that is specifically designed uh, for the Apex engine by Skytrax um, or more specifically by Teal Jenkins. Having the ability to have a off-the-shelf gearbox is really the key element when adapting any engine to an aircraft application. We've seen other solutions used to uh, come up with a gear reduction system using adapters to Rotax C gearboxes on the RX-1 version of the engine, um, some one-off designs, but having a really robust and proven and tested design from Skytrax really made this engine that much more attractive. Furthermore, the design in itself, if you go back to the uh, motorcycle design, is really designed for 200 horsepower. Now there are different parts on this engine and the horsepower output from the original RX-1 is about 140 to 150 horsepower, but the capability of boosting it up to 200 horsepower and remaining inside the original design of the motorcycle engine uh, also made it another uh, key feature of the engine that I liked. We could boost the power and not exceed the design. Now, of course, with the application of a turbo, um, it is possible to boost this engine up to as much as 400 horsepower in sled applications. Um, we haven't seen that yet in an airplane application, but there has been uh, you know, up, upwards of 300 horsepower put through this engine. So the potential is there. Um, the way we have it set up, it should be right around 150 to 160 horse. And uh, I think that's going to be more than enough for a Kit Fox, which is designed for 100 horsepower. So there's gobs of horsepower, low fuel burn, lightweight. It just makes this engine really the top choice for me when I was building this project. The community that's involved with this engine has also been extremely supportive. My thanks to Brian Dacus, uh, Ken Brown, um, the Yamaha aircraft conversion page and everybody who's involved there. The support and ideas that go into making this a uh, viable option for air airplanes is really great. Um, so I recommend that you guys all jump in on the Facebook page, read through all the hist history of the posts, and get as much information about this engine as you can if you're looking at it as an option. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into my particular install. So thanks once again to Brian Dacus for getting uh, some additional parts out to me. Uh, you got this little fitting here that goes in line with your return oil line that allows you to screw in the oil uh, temperature sensor. Uh, there's an adapter down here that goes into the case that allows you to put in the oil pressure sensor from AEM. And then um, he sent me the gearbox temperature probe. 
and it has a wire attached to it that's coming back and plugging into the harness. Um, you also sent over some fuel line fittings, you the quick disconnect that hooks to the rail, um, and then a, a fitting that allows you to screw in a AEM fuel pressure sender. Uh, let's see what else. We're still working on the adaption for the coolant temperature sender. We're going to basically drill out these threads and then tap it with an MPT, quarter inch MPT, and have a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter for the coolant sensor that goes in there. Um, he also sent some rubber isolator mounts, and actually I think that's what I'm going to tackle right now. And these are going to go um, for the AEM ECU, the Infinity, we're going to put these rubber isolators so it's not directly mounted to the firewall, but it will have these rubber uh, isolators holding it out to reduce vibration. So those will come through the same holes. I just need to put that in there and it's just going to extend the ECU out about, oh, looks like about three eighths. Yeah, maybe quarter. I don't know. Anyway, so I'll put those on and see how that, that all works out. It shouldn't really change anything on the firewall side, but it should allow for vibration dampening uh, for that ECU. So thank you to Brian for sending the rest of that stuff out. So one other thing today we'll be knocking out, um, mostly because Brian Dacus needs a picture of it, and we want to get that stall manual completed for the AEM um, system that we put on here, is the knock sensor. So the knock sensor is going to go basically on this bolt stud right here for the starter. But these support fins that come down just need to be ground down a little bit to give the radius for the knock sensor to clear right there. So I'll be pulling that and grinding off a little bit of that, that fin right there in order for that to fit. And then uh, the knock sensor will be done. All right, so for today, I'm working on getting this uh, battery mounted. And it's been back and forth, the, the design on where to put the battery. I originally wanted to put it right here. Um, and I'm, I've decided to put it on the cockpit side of the firewall, mostly to free up space on this side for the coolant reservoir and the oil reservoir. I also have the radiator and some other things. I want to try to keep it fairly uh, limited on what I put on the front side. So um, I did talk to EarthX. It's totally fine to mount the battery um, in a horizontal instead of vertical position. So I'm going to put nut plates on the battery um, box and then I'm going to have the screws come up from underneath into those nut plates so that there's no screws sticking down um, into where my feet would be. So the screws will go up. That was actually my wife's idea. Um, I was showing her what I was going to do and she's like, why don't you do it the other way so the screws don't stick down at your feet. She's uh, always figuring the stuff out like that for me. She's very smart. So um, I went ahead and made this shelf this morning out of 6063 aluminum so it's a little stiffer to carry the weight of the battery box i had some of these shells made up um, from send cut send out of 040 um, but they'll flex a little bit too much and uh, i wanted to get going on this today so i just went ahead and made that one up real quick um, out of the thicker of aluminum and four screws go through nut plates on the box itself and then it drops into place That'll be fastened down, probably high sawed or clamped. And the battery's all in and done. Then I've got the power cable to it. it goes right there. Um, goes up to the contactor. Goes over to the other side's contactor. And then the power comes from that contactor to the master avionics bus. Called the main bus is what I'm calling it. And then on this side, you got your other contactor, so the power is coming over to it. Once you hit the switch on the key, this will activate the power to the essential bus. So this drives your ECU and fuel pumps. So that's all in, and power distributed wires are done. Uh, I will come off the battery direct to the starter relay with an 8 gauge wire. So this is the wire that comes on the sled. Actually, it's this one to the battery. Um, so I'll be making a new wire that comes to this post to go to the starter uh, for that. And um, 
I've got the wire for that. I'm just waiting for some eight gauge ring connectors. So, all right guys, another quick update. So what I'm doing here is mounting up the battery. Battery's now mounted in place. Everything's wired, so all the grounds, powers, uh, contactors, and the distribution to the circuit breakers or the fuses um, is all been done now. So there's a couple of things that need to still be attached to the fuse blocks, and that's basically lights. Um, so here's how it works. <clears throat> Start with the key. Key is going to be turned on, and you can hear the right side contactor go off. Okay, that powers up the central bus, which is the circuit breaker or the fuse block on the right side. That powers the engine uh, setup as well as the AM ECU. <clears throat> so on that same block is the iPad um, because it, I want it to be separate from if for some reason I lost the main EFIS, I could use the iPad as a backup um, EFIS. So I turn on that one, you can hear the fan come on, and then I've got my iPhone plugged in, and you can see it's charging off of that USB port that supplies power to the iPad. Obviously I don't have the iPad in right now, but you can see my point there. So that's on this switch here, turn that off. Now if I turn on the power to the main avionics, you can hear this contactor here go. Supplies power to that bus. And then that, in a sense, is basically going to power up my radio, which I can now turn on. And you can see the GRT screen starting to come alive. It takes a little bit to boot that GRT screen. And again, I still have to go through all the settings to get that set up properly. But it's running in the background doing its initializing. So it takes a little bit to get that one to come up. But now you can see the screen has now come up on the Grand Rapids. And there you have it. It is powered by its own powered system and the uh, wiring is coming along. I'm going to go the engine mount real quick. Uh, this design was done by Ken Brown uh, out of Reno. He modeled this on a computer, came up with a 3D design and then all these tubes are pre-cut on a CNC machine. Um, this is the first version. There was some issues we ran into with clearance on parts of the engine. Um, and so it's been redesigned for that reason and also because the complexity of the welding on this one made it very difficult to reproduce. And so his new version is over here. You actually end up going with thicker tubing. Um, he ran those main support tubes further to the firewall and increased the thickness of the support ears, bigger tubing all around. Um, it's much stronger, but it does weigh an extra pound. So I think that's a good good place to sacrifice a pound, though. Um, you definitely want that engine mount to be strong. So here's the old one. Here's the new one. And before you guys start sending me messages about whether you can buy that old one from me, you cannot. That is a prototype. It is not going to be used on an aircraft. Um, this is the final product, and this is the one we're going to use on the aircraft. So... So I'm sure I've already done a clip about this, but I can't remember if I did or not. Um, the other thing from Ken Brown is the header. What a gorgeous header. Um, super excited about this. It's a mandrel bent header, meaning there's only one weld between the collector and the header. All these tubes are bent to shape with one piece. And what that allowed him to do is shaved almost two and a half pounds off um, other headers that are out there uh, that you can purchase. So this whole thing weighed about six and a half pounds compared to over eight pounds on some of the other headers that are out there. So not only is it beautiful, it's super lightweight, very strong, fit perfectly. And then on the end, he's got this swivel ball so you can really customize how you're gonna come off of the collector to your exhaust. Um, also, in my application, I've got the wideband O2 sensor um, there after the collector at the ball. Um, I also had them do um, these bungs or, or nuts welded in for the uh, EGT probes. Instead of doing the band clamp style, these are the thread-in style 
EGT uh, probes. So the header fit perfectly. Um, we are gonna change to the new current engine mount, um, but it, it definitely will fit that one because that's the one he modeled it off of. All right, so I didn't talk about it too much yesterday because the fan and the air conditioner were all running. I've got the engine mount finished. Okay, this is version number two. Um, the number, the first engine mount, um, you see over here, sitting over there, that's gonna become an engine stand for temporary and then that's gonna go back to Ken Brown as he wants to hang it on his wall as the uh, first prototype. So this engine mount is the new latest version from Ken. Uh, it may be offered from Steve Henry once we figure out this uh, is where we want everything. Um, that's maybe something that Ken has Steve Henry uh, offer to the market. Um, the header, this is also from Ken Brown. Um, the guy's been amazingly helpful on this project when it comes to the engine. Firewall forward. Between him and Brian Dacus, those are like my two new best friends. Um, I really appreciate everything they've done for me and helped me out with this project on. So um, anyway, I got the engine mount. We had to uh, make a small adjustment to the to the bottom part here. Um, so I went back over to Reno. We made that adjustment um, and then got home. It fits absolutely perfect. Literally just drops into everything. There's no uh, binding at all. It fits great. And uh, so I went ahead and painted it. Um, I didn't powder coat it because I want to be able to, if I need to, sand off the paint and weld something on it and then paint it back with the same stuff. So I did use a, uh, an enamel paint for that. Um, it's on, it should stay on, it shouldn't come back off again. Same with the engine. Went ahead and took the valve cover off, painted that. Um, the cat's out of the bag on that one. That's my accent color on the airplane, it's gonna be yellow. Um, it's been back and forth about that between blue, yellow, and orange. But uh, some other fairly famous builds went with the orange, so I didn't want to copy that, even though it was on my list of top choices. Um, I also really love yellow and black, and you guys can even see from my last airplane was yellow and black, but you can also check out my mountain bike, which is yellow, gray, and black. So I don't know if this was uh, subconscious decisions of picking it up off the mountain bike, but basically the plane's gonna be the same same colors, yellow, black, and, and yellow, or yellow, black, and uh, gray. Um, the only thing I need to change out is I ordered some uh, permanent bolts to go in the engine mount. I'm also gonna be changing out these bolts that are on the engine mount to the frame. Uh, let's see, and you can see the O2 sensors in here. Uh, all the wiring is hooked up to the engine. I still need to tidy up um, the wiring down this rail. Uh, I'm gonna actually take this rail and I'm gonna make it a little bit lower profile. I'm gonna get rid of this about this half inch here. I'm gonna bring it down tighter um, so I get more uh, clearance above the valve cover for the cowling. So that's where we're at so far. Um, like I said, tomorrow's gonna be trying to figure out the cooling system on here. Uh, I got this cooling system, the oil system, and the uh, throttle to do. Once that's done, then we'll start playing around with the cowling. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Uh, next time we'll get into the cooling system and the oil system and some of the other systems on the engine. So stay tuned for that episode coming out shortly.